Hi. This is a mess. I gotta get hair and makeup in here. I took a shower. Um, all right, so hi. Welcome to a video. And uh, today, I don't know if it's like a formal thing or not. Um, we made some pre-punched, pre-sewn kits with Buckle Guy. Uh, we had done them with Weaver. They're different, different uh, kits. They are uh, envelope wallet, uh, the wallet that Kayleen is summer wallet, but that's her design that she's taking with her. I added a third pocket to it. Uh, and the one I'm excited about, we did the snap wallet and this one. Now I'll be able to show you all the other ones, but I stupidly, they sent us a bunch to obviously check over and stuff. And I focused on the natural veg tan one because I make mostly everything on natural veg tan. And um, we're gonna be painting it with Alpha 6 paints. So the one I didn't have, I had to order for my own video. They give me a budget. They don't, they're not making me pay for all this stuff myself. Um, so we're gonna open it up. Now the cool thing about their kits is they come, they don't die cut them. They cut them on a, not a laser, a swivel. It's like a big cricket. And I don't know what else is in here. Uh, oh, they sent me a bunch of other stuff I can't show you right now. Okay, can't show you that. But they come in tubes. And we're gonna have a little sticker that says quarter signature. Uh, just a little to denote that this is one that I designed. But this is our universal long wallet in one of my favorite configurations. If you go down in the second link, you can buy the universal long wallet PDF and it makes over three dozen different long wallets. It's basically just to make your own long wallet kit. You can pick from having a strap or a no strap or a zip pocket or all pockets. This is all card pockets. And let's give it an open and see what's inside. I love the tubes on these. So you just open the tube and you get all your stuff. So tools and materials, go through that in a minute. Mostly all uh, Wicket and Craig natural veg tan. Your snaps are already installed. Nice solid brass glove snaps. Not sure if you can pick them. Oh boy. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm not sure if you can pick the color of the snap, but I know you can pick the color of the leather and the thread. And then this is our front. And QR code for instructions. So in the tools and materials bag, you're gonna get pretty much everything besides a set of scissors that you need to make this wallet. And they do have an option to even get a set of scissors and um, something else too. But we have our sandpaper here couple of needles. I specced mine with cream thread and a piece of cloth for burnishing your edges. And they even include a little tiny chunk of wax. Okay, so I have my shell here for our long wallet and I threw it out in the sun to put a little color on it. You can see this is the original color it comes in and natural veg tan, tans like skin because there's nothing on it. Now I'm going to do on this, I'm going to do some carving, not tooling. I'm just gonna make some straight lines and I'm gonna use some of the Alpha 6 paints. I want to make a tracker style stripe, a tracker blanket style stripe pattern. Now, for those of you who don't know what a tracker style is, uh, let me show you. Um, this is a e tracker style blanket, known as a Hudson Bay blanket, uh, Pendleton, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, these were used for trade, from what I understand. And these are these are the points. So this tells you how big the blanket is. This is a king size because it has four points, I believe. If it had three and a half, it would be a queen. If it had two, it would be, or if it had two and a half, it would be a full. If it had two, it would be a single bed, I think. But don't quote me on that. Anyway, traditional green, yellow, green, red, yellow, blue stripes. And I wanna make that on one side of this wallet. So I'm just gonna use a little water here. I know if you're a tooler, you're probably looking at me like this is sacrilege, but the goal of casing leather is not to soak it through. It's just to let it get damp. 
So I'm gonna soak the whole thing because I don't, I'm not gonna over dye it, I don't think. So I don't want half of my wallet to have a water stain in the middle. And now we need to let this sit for a little while. So while we sit, we can mark out where our stripes are gonna go. All right, so I measured it out and we're gonna do half inch stripes with a quarter stripe, with a quarter inch in between. And what I did, I did was I picked how far I wanted my first stripe to start from my stitch line. That was the first thing I did. And then now I'm using both the stitching holes because it's a kit, so they're all gonna be the same, and the grid on my mat. So I have, this is gonna be leather. So here is gonna be a half inch for a colored stripe. Then I'm gonna do a quarter inch, which if your, this ruler happens to be an inch and a quarter wide. So all I'm gonna do is line up this side instead of this side, and that will give me a quarter inch. Then I'm gonna move this down so that that is lined up again with my half inch mark. I'm gonna do a half inch. And you can make sure by following the stitch holes that you're going straight and everything's gonna look good. I went ahead and painted a white layer on all of the stripes using Alpha 6's uh, ivory color. And I did that, Alpha 6 has really good coverage. So we have our red, our yellow, um, our green, and our blue right there. Um, Alpha 6 has really good coverage, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna age this down and I'm gonna end up using the just standard antiquing finish that you would use in tooling. Um, so what I wanna do is I kinda wanna sand down through the color so you can see a little bit of the white peeking through. So I'm gonna start uh, with, what's the first color? I think the first color on top is green. Okay, so I think I made an oopsie. Uh, I don't even know if Buffalo Guy sells the airbrush paints, but um, I think me and Melissa bought, Dad Hands bought some of the airbrush paints because they're better for marbling. They're basically just the regular paints uh, already reduced. So if you want to reduce um, your paints so that they come out more watercolory, you'll see the yellow is full coverage with just one pass and the green needs a couple more passes, which is fine, that's fine, that's just what I have. Um, but I'm pretty sure Buckle Guy only sells the actual paint itself. I don't know if they do the uh, airbrush paint, but just keep in mind that there are differences. Now, this is also the same bottle, but it's just a bigger bottle of regular paint. It's not the airbrush paint. I think black label is airbrush, white is regular paint. Fine on this out as I go, but we're getting there. So I'm gonna have to do Probably mix some black with the blue because if we look at our blanket, we need like a pretty dark, well, I guess it's not a dark maybe, we just need a darker blue. So I probably won't mix black, I'll just do a bunch of layers, which will be cool when we age it down. Um, I'm gonna start sanding it and making some dings and dents and stuff because I want this thing to look like it was used for a while. That's the goal here. So you can see we have some very bright colors here. All the paint's nice and dry, <clears throat> so I have a little bit of 220 grit that's been worn down. So it's probably closer to like 300 grit and some 400 grit. I'm gonna go slow. You can tell I did not fill in everything so it's solid because we're gonna age it down every, anyway. So I'm just gonna slowly go into this because I don't know. Yeah, see this comes off really easily. So the 220 is gonna be pretty aggressive. So I wanna go really careful with that and maybe pick a spot or two where you go a little heavier, but not too heavy. We don't want to make this look, I mean, if you want to make it look like it's 100 years old, go for it, but I don't want it to look like that. I just want to make it look like it's been used for maybe 10 or 15 years.
Right, so, as you can see, with our dye dry, we're starting to look a lot more aged. Uh, it did wash out a little more of the color than I wanted it to. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go over these stripes with paint one more time, um, but just very, very lightly. And I'll probably use this, uh, the reducer, to almost do like a watercolor wash of the color. There we go. And you can see with it reduced, which means you're making it more transparent. It's yellow, but it's not like neon yellow against this worn out, worn down, um, against this worn down background. Now we need to age it a little bit more. Uh, this is a, I used to build custom, not custom, but I used to build electric guitars when I was a teenager, just order the bodies and stuff like that. And when you wanted to relic something, the trick was you would take a box, so this is just a cardboard box, and you would just put a bunch of stuff in it, right? I just went up to the garage and grabbed doorknobs, little stuff. It could be rocks, it could be anything. We want some random, we want, we want to randomize the dings and dents and stuff in this because we already have the look that we're going for on the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to close this up and I'm going to shake it a bit. And we're going to do it in steps because we don't want to overdo it. All right, antiquing time. I've never done this before, ever. Uh, Melissa from Dead Hands told me how to do it. So we're going to just wing it. This is dark brown antique finish. And I'm pretty sure what we do is we apply it and remove it immediately. And then what happens is it gets stuck in the, in the low parts of all of this. That might have been way too much. It might have been not, definitely wasn't not enough to tell you that much. All right, so now we gotta remove it. Oh, look at the stamp, that's cool. Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted. So you see all this little texture here? That's all from just using that box method to get all those little dings and dents that you can't see without antiquing it. Now we're looking vintagey. No, it's hard to tell. The light's going crazy. It's, that's west, and there's only so much my little light can do. So I'm gonna go over to the window and show you what we, oh, no, window is too much. So look at all that texture we got. And then you can see what used to look like a four-year-old did the paint job. Now it looks like, well, maybe a 12-year-old did it. But that antiquing fills those ridges. So all those raggedy lines that I left while painting, you don't have to worry about them because the antiquing just will dry right in there and it looks nice and clean. Hi, okay, so it's flesh side time. So we need to take this and make this look nice. So what we're gonna do is a token all doesn't just come in clear, it comes in colors, uh, black and brown. So I have here brown token all, which I've never used before. Brown. And we're gonna brown token all the back of this because this, is, this isn't this is gonna work for us. So let's see how this goes. I'm sure there are better ways to apply this um, than just using your hands, but that's what I got and that's what I'm using. Okay, I can't find the glass slicker, but I have this um, <laughs> gigantic solid brass industrial plate from a transformer, I believe. So we're just gonna use that. 
and I'm sure that'll work just fine. I'm going to take some clear tokenol now and I'm going to apply it over the entire top and that should seal in all of our colors and dyes and all that good stuff. One of the cool things about these kits are they come in three different colors of leather. You get to choose. Uh, you can get Horween, you can get Valdebrana, or you can get Wicket and Craig Natural Vetch. And then you can also choose your thread color, and I think they have like 15 different types of um, Ritza. So what I like about that is you can get two kits and mix and match. So this used to be this color, but we've done a lot of stuff to it. Meaning that when I flip this over, it would look okay with natural veg interior, but I kind of want it to match. So what I did was I used the black Ritza, and I'm using the Valdebrana from another kit to get it to match. What that'll allow me to do is now I can use the Valdebrana on the exterior. I don't know if I have it on the bench right now. And I can use the natural veg tan on the interior. So I can make one wallet that's kind of funky or patterned or decorated or whatever with the Wicket and Craig. And then I can make another one that's a little more mellow, a little more modern. Now, I didn't show putting the center of these together. Your kits will come with instructional uh, QR codes. Scan that. There's a whole PDF. But I will be making videos like straight up just very mellow. This is how this haul goes together videos on all the kits we put out. I'm working on them now. So um, you'll see you have your bottom pocket, your middle pocket, or yeah, top pocket bank, middle pocket bank, and then of course the bottom pocket is held together by the exterior so that you have six card slots on either side, 12 card slots total. I'm going to sew around this and then we'll just get to doing some edges and we're done. A little up close uh, with the edges. Looks worn into me, you know. Not bad. So, um, all of the kits and paints and all that good stuff will be in the description linked. And I'm really happy to have this design out as a full kit because uh, I'm doing my best this time to do kind of unique kits that still encompass you know, a lot of people's needs. Uh, they're not gonna just be, there's some nice curves and nice design elements. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.